so I just wanted to share something um, that uh, I could relate to when I was reading this um, portion of the chapter in the book and then of course seeing the picture here and it's something that I've kept through the years but um, as a child I actually would play with something that looked like this and you would hold it up to the light and um, as you can see, it's very similar. Uh, that one's made of wood. This one here is of light plastic. And um, you would then put a reel into it. Uh, so I have here um, uh, of uh, Oak Creek Canyon in Arizona and of um, Zion National Park. And you would put a reel look like this in here and um, one thing that's different of course is this is in color and uh, this picture right here was the exact same picture of this one so that's where you get the double exposure and uh, it was called a view master at this time um, but it does relate or refer to the stereo and I'll read this little small section it says view master reels add to the realism of stereo to the beauty of color to make pictures come to life and um, it was in or it is in 3d and it's something that um, as a little girl I played with um, all the time so something that I just wanted to share with the class Janet I love that you shared that with the class and it, it connected with me also I remember growing up with a view master and I I think it's so fabulous when we can make these connections with these technologies because that's what we're talking about. We don't traditionally think about these toys that we grew up with as visual technologies that, that fall into this timeline of um, the history of photography, but you've so eloquently situated it directly in that way, and that's exactly what it is. Um, and I had a Viewmaster, and I can I have this distinct memory that that you recalled for me that I love so much. I remember um, I used my Viewmaster as we were driving. My family was driving to Disneyland for the very first time. I was in kindergarten, and I was looking at some pictures, our reel of um, the Jungle Cruise in Disneyland, which is still there. Um, and I can remember this one image in color of a spider on a web, and I have this real fear of spiders. And it was in 3D because these images, when they combine, they're in three dimensions, which is, you know, part of the, the, the how, one of the reasons why they're so fantastic to people, right? We need to really make that clear that they were in three dimensions. Um, and I was so afraid that I was going to see that spider when I was on the Jungle Cruise and it all came back to the effect of that image on me as a viewer. So I think that when we situate the effect of these images on people and we can imagine, you know, how real it must have been to, you know, look at an image like this one and imagine what it must have been like, you know, to just kind of picture yourself there in a place like Egypt with the the pyramid the great pyramids of Giza behind you when you know you're someone who is maybe basking on the beaches of France and you you're really never ever going to get out to Giza um anyway it's it's just it's a fascinating concept you can see how it really does open up your world um just through my own little experience as a, a kindergartner on her first journey to Disneyland. But thank you for sharing that experience. And I love that you use the webcam. It's a great um, demonstration of how it can open up sharing in our class. So I hope others take that opportunity.